Before we get into today's podcast, I wanted to let you know about a special ebook that's yours to download free today. It's called Five Ways to Connect with God Ancient Practices for Modern Times. It's safe to say that in today's fast paced culture, we're all seeking more rest and less chaos. Only then can we find true connection with our Creator. Five Ways to Connect to God offers five unique spiritual principles to Christians who may be feeling dry when it comes to their prayer life or spiritual fervor. These include practices such as choosing a word for the year, the power of one phrase prayers, and the importance of cultivating thankfulness. Some of these principles are hundreds of years old, yet they offer a fresh way to connect us with the living God. Download your copy of Five Ways to Connect to God by visiting premierinsight.org forward slash resources. That's premierinsight.org slash resources. And now it's time for today's podcast. The Bible in a Year, bringing the Word to life. Father God, it is written, People do not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Speak, O Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your holy word today. Amen. Psalm 118, verses 17 to 29. I will not die, but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. For the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures for ever. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2 to 18. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly, as I should. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation always be full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Tychicus will tell you all the news about me. He is a dear brother, a faithful minister, and fellow servant in the Lord. I am sending him to you for the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. He is coming with Onesimus, our faithful and dear brother, who is one of you. They will tell you everything that is happening here. My fellow prisoner Aristarchus sends you his greetings, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. You have received instructions about him. If he comes to you, welcome him. Jesus, who is called Justice, also sends greetings. These are the only Jews among my fellow workers for the kingdom of God, and they have proved a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends greetings. He is always wrestling in prayer for you, that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. I vouch for him that he is working hard for you and for those at Laodicea, and Hierapolis. 
our dear friend Luke, the doctor, and Demas send greetings. Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters in Laodicea, and to Nympha and the church in her house. After this letter has been read to you, see that it is also read in the church of the Laodiceans, and that you in turn read the letter from Laodicea. Tell Archippus, see to it that you complete the ministry you have received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting in my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. Jeremiah chapter 16 and 17 Then the word of the Lord came to me. You must not marry and have sons or daughters in this place. For this is what the Lord says about the sons and daughters born in this land and about the women who are their mothers and the men who are their fathers. They will die of deadly diseases. They will not be mourned or buried, but will be like dung lying on the ground. They will perish by sword and famine, and their dead bodies will become food for the birds and the wild animals. For this is what the Lord says, Do not enter a house where there is a funeral meal. Do not go to mourn or show sympathy, because I have withdrawn my blessing, my love and my pity from this people, declares the Lord. Both high and low will die in this land. They will not be buried or mourned, and no one will cut themselves or shave their head for the dead. No one will offer food to comfort those who mourn for the dead, not even for a father or a mother, nor will anyone give them a drink to console them. And do not enter a house where there is feasting and sit down to eat and drink. For this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Before your eyes and in your days, I will bring an end to the sounds of joy and gladness and to the voices of bride and bridegroom in this place. When you tell these people all this, and they ask you, Why has the Lord decreed such a great disaster against us? What wrong have we done? What sin have we committed against the Lord our God? Then say to them, It is because your ancestors forsook me, declares the Lord, and followed other gods, and served and worshipped them. They forsook me and did not keep my law. But you have behaved more wickedly than your ancestors. See how all of you are following the stubbornness of your evil hearts instead of obeying me. So I will throw you out of this land, into a land neither you nor your ancestors have known. And there you will serve other gods day and night, for I will show you no favour. However, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when it will no longer be said, As surely as the Lord lives, who brought the Israelites up out of Egypt, but it will be said, As surely as the Lord lives, who brought the Israelites up out of the land of the north, and out of all the countries where he had banished them. For I will restore them to the land I gave to their ancestors. But now I will send for many fishermen, declares the Lord, and they will catch them. After that, I will send for many hunters, and they will hunt them down on every mountain and hill and from the crevices of the rocks. My eyes are on all their ways. They are not hidden from me nor is their sin concealed from my eyes. I will repay them double for their wickedness and their sin, because they have defiled my land 
with the lifeless forms of their vile images, and have filled my inheritance with their detestable idols. Lord, my strength and my fortress, my refuge in time of distress, to you the nations will come from the ends of the earth and say, Our ancestors possessed nothing but false gods, worthless idols that did them no good. Do people make their own gods? Yes, but they are not gods. Therefore I will teach them. This time I will teach them my power and might. Then they will know that my name is the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 17 Judah's sin is engraved with an iron tool, inscribed with a flint point on the tablets of their hearts and on the horns of their altars. Even their children remember their altars and Asherah poles. Beside the spreading trees and on the high hills, my mountain in the land, and your wealth and all your treasures, I will give away as plunder, together with your high places, because of sin throughout your country. Through your own fault, you will lose the inheritance I gave you. I will enslave you to your enemies in a land you do not know, for you have kindled my anger, and it will burn forever. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wastelands. They will not see prosperity when it comes, they will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought, and never fails to bear fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart, and examine the mind, to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. Like a partridge that hatches eggs it did not lay, are those who gain riches by unjust means. When their lives are half gone, their riches will desert them, and in the end they will prove to be fools. A glorious throne, exalted from the beginning, is the place of our sanctuary, Lord you are the hope of Israel. All who forsake you will be put to shame. Those who turn away from you will be written in the dust, because they have forsaken the Lord, the spring of living water. Heal me, Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are the one I praise. They keep saying to me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it now be fulfilled. I have not run away from being your shepherd. You know I have not desired the day of despair. What passes my lips is open before you. Do not be a terror to me. You are my refuge in the day of disaster. Let my persecutors be put to shame but keep me from shame. Let them be terrified, but keep me from terror. Bring on them the day of disaster. Destroy them 
with double destruction. This is what the Lord said to me. Go and stand at the gate of the people, through which the kings of Judah go in and out. Stand also at all the other gates of Jerusalem. Say to them, Hear the word of the Lord, you kings of Judah, and all people of Judah, and everyone living in Jerusalem who come through these gates. This is what the Lord says. Be careful not to carry a load on the Sabbath day, or bring it through the gates of Jerusalem. Do not bring a load out of your houses, or do any work on the Sabbath, but keep the Sabbath day holy, as I commanded your ancestors. Yet they did not listen or pay attention. They were stiff-necked and would not listen or respond to discipline. But if you are careful to obey me, declares the Lord, and bring no load through the gates of this city on the Sabbath, but keep the Sabbath day holy by not doing any work on it, then kings who sit on David's throne will come through the gates of this city with their officials. They and their officials will come riding in chariots and on horses, accompanied by the men of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, and this city will be inhabited for ever. People will come from the towns of Judah and the villages around Jerusalem, from the territory of Benjamin and the western foothills, from the hill country and the Negev, bringing burnt offerings and sacrifices, grain offerings and incense, and bringing thank offerings to the house of the Lord. But if you do not obey me to keep the Sabbath day holy, by not carrying any load as you come through the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then I will kindle an unquenchable fire in the gates of Jerusalem that will consume her fortresses. Father God, thank you that we know that in all things you work for the good of those who love you, who have been called according to your purpose. Amen. For more resources to help you bring the word to life, go to premier.org.uk forward slash Bible. This reading has been taken from the NIV Bible Biblica and is published by Hodder and Stoughton.